this story is true, I ought to know. I not only covered it for my newspaper, I became a part of it. You read about Phil Regal in the papers. Enforcer for the underworld, they called him. But the real inside story never was told before. No one could possibly tell it until now and stay alive. It started one dismal night under a bridge in a lonely stretch of Brooklyn. Dowsing the body with gasoline, the killers overlooked his expensive sports shoes, which enabled the police to identify the murdered man as Julian Lefty Fogel, small-time racketeer, most recently employed by Phil Regal in his personal loan business. Ah, you slobs. A lousy little contract like that and you mess it up. We had to do it fast. The one thing I didn't want, identification. Some people are coming Shut to... Shut up! You guys got to get out of town. Where to? Detroit. See Mr. G. He'll take care of you. Phil, there's a man waiting. I told you to stay out of here. There's a newspaper man in the corridor. He insists on seeing you. Name's Joe McFarland. He's the louse that wrote that. Tell him to take a flying... Ah, bring him in. I'll be right out. Here. Now get out. Hey! That way. See, Mr. G. And don't send me no postcards. McFarlane? Yes, New York Chronicle. Some questions I'd like to ask you, Mr. Regal. Sure, come on in while I get dressed. I don't have much time, kid. I've got to go and see my mother and sister over in Brooklyn, where they live. Well, I won't keep you long. You know, Sunday night, I don't show up for dinner. But well, my old lady is just staying Sunday. So you read my story? Yeah, somebody was reading it to me. D.A. statement. Did you read that? No, what did he say? said, uh, it is known that Regal polices the Brooklyn underworld for the syndicate. He's been implicated in extortion, gambling, bookmaking, and prostitution. Who does that bum think he is? In every case in which his name has come up, witnesses have disappeared or met violent ends. In this latest gang murder, police hope to uncover evidence that will lead directly to the door of Phil Regal, for whose questionable finance company Lefty Fogel worked. I thought you might have a statement to make. Look, I'm a legitimate businessman in the personal loan business. Every rat comes up in this town, they try to pin on me. Is that what you want me to say? Yeah. And that dumb jerk starts making indictments without uh, corroborating witnesses. He's gonna land right square in this keister. All right, I'll word it exactly that way. Yeah, do me a favor. Verbatim. That's uh, word for word. Can I drop you downtown? Yeah, sure, if you're going that way. Sure, come on. Where are you going? With you. Now, Janet, uh... Don't you I... think it's about time I met your mother and sister? You mind waiting for me downstairs? Okay. Look, Phil, every now time... Now, you I... look, I'm telling you for the last time. Maybe you know how to talk good, which fork to use, but you ain't meeting my family. I'm not good enough for them. Sure you're good. For me, you're very good. When it comes to my family, that's different. Sometimes, Phil, I don't understand you. You understand me? Be back in a couple of hours. Wait for me.
much of Carson, huh? Hiya, Louie. How's tricks? Oh, hello, Mr. Regal. Say, I hope it's nothing serious about your sister, Rosalie. What do you mean, serious? Well, I thought... Well, you see, uh, me and Nellie, that's my wife, we went over to Dr. Levitt's on Thursday. My wife is uh, having another, you know. Hey, congratulations. Yeah. So anyway, your sister, she was just coming out when we was coming in. So I thought I maybe... I talked to her on the phone Friday. She didn't say anything. Nah, it couldn't be nothing. Oh, uh, well, knock on wood. See you, kid. Yeah. Hey, Mama! Rosalie! Your boy's here. Phil, I'm in the kitchen. <laughs> Hiya, baby. Darling. How's <laughs> tricks, huh? Fine. Hey. Phil, you are all right? As long as I can eat goulash and spatzels with you, I'm all right. <laughs> Don't eat from the pot. Wait for Rosalie. I'm going to send you and Rosalie to Miami for the winter. How many times have I heard that? I'm going to send you and Rosalie to Miami for the winter. You know Mama won't go. Hey, hi, you sweetie. Hey, where you been? Oh, I had something to do. Ah, come on, don't bluff me off. Where you been? Been to church. I said a little prayer for you. Yeah, that's my Rosalie. <laughs> come on, let's eat. Tell me, sweetie, uh, how was the house college? I quit. You what? I quit. What happened? Nothing. I just don't want to go anymore. I'm going to get a job. Listen, Rosalie Regalsic don't need no job. You got a home? I bought your car? Do you want something else? Tell me. Phil, I just want to stand on my own two feet. I can't go on taking things from you forever. What's the use of having dope? I can't give it to my family. Tomorrow you're going back to Hunter's College. Stop playing like a god with her. Don't you see how nervous she is? Okay, okay, let's eat. Later we discuss. There's nothing like a cold glass of seltzer with dinner. <laughs> that you learn from your papa. <sighs> Sit down. Phil, I'm, I'm not hungry. What's the matter? She never eats enough. And then she gets nervous all the time. Is that why you were at the doctor's office Thursday? I wasn't. Doctor? Which doctor? Oh, I don't know. Some, some guy named Levitt. Levitt? The baby doctor? He's crazy. I wasn't at any doctor's office. Louis, from the third floor, him and his wife saw you there. Is that true, Rosalie? Mama, please. Tell her. Tell her the truth. Still leave me alone. I can't take any more. Now I understand a lot why she stopped college and other things. You little slap. All I want to do is to make this girl happy. And she gets herself jammed up like this. Oh, oh, Phil, please. It won't do any good. Am I going to have to slap it out of you? No, Phil, no. I'll tell you. But there's nothing you can do. Whoever he is, I'll make him marry you. Who is it? Nicky Bradner. Bradner? The boy who is in prison. In Sing Sing. No good, pretty faced punk. You could go for a. for a two bit crumb like that. Don't make it sound cheap and filthy. He loved me, and I loved him. I still do. Love? He went after every skirt from head to the river. No. No, it wasn't like that. Believe me, Mama. 
It wasn't. He would have married me, only then he got in this terrible trouble. Then only you. What about Mama? How is she going to hold up her head around him? Oh, Mama. Oh, Mama, I'm so ashamed. <laughs> but you must understand. But he would have married me. You've got to understand. I'm so sorry. How long has he got? Oh, Phil, it's no use. How long has he got? It's in the paper. Where's the paper, Mama? There. Oh, he would have married me. I know. He's still got 60 days. Nicky Bradner had 60 days. He didn't know that fate in the person of Phil Regal was working an angle. It had all happened so fast, it seemed like a nightmare. Just two short months before, Nikki was walking down the avenue. It was a typical Saturday night. Hey, you beautiful. Me, you don't have to give that goop. What do you want? Could you trust me for 20 till Monday, Millie? Goodbye, Nikki. It was nice knowing you. If I see him back? You'll look, you'll see. Thank you for the house, gentlemen. Hey, Lot. Nick, I see you a minute. Yeah. You want in, Nick? We're filled up today. No, I'm flat. I want to ask you. Hey, Lassie, will you close the door? You want the shamus in here? Yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah, what, is, look, what I want to see you about, I got a date with a certain babe tonight, and just my luck, I'm flat. Oh, gee, that's too bad, kid. Yeah, I've been trying to date this babe for weeks. Look, if you let me have the 20, I'd dip into the box for you and do it. You know I would. But you know what I'm working for, Regal? You want me to get my head cut off? Okay, 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 Lassie. Another thing, uh, this, uh, this date tonight. Is it Rosalie, Phil Regal's sister? No. Because I, uh, I hear you've been going with her. Watch your step, will you, kid? You know how Phil is. This is somebody else entirely. Okay. I'd have to get back in there before they rob me blind. I, I'm sorry about the dough. I'll see you later. Huh? <laughs> What's so funny? I knew you wouldn't have to spend a nickel. <sighs> I gotta buy a bottle. It'll only take a minute. I gotta close up early tonight. My daughter's getting married. Oh, congratulations. I won't keep you. I'd like a fifth of old Hornet. Uh, you got any ginger ale on ice? I'd like a real cold. Yeah, I got it in the ice box. How many? A couple large. Hit the guy that did it. I saw him. Yeah? No. No. That's it. That's the guy. That's him. Yeah. Has he got a record? Just one juvenile offense, car stealing. What do you say, Mr. Cardini? 
Yes. That's him, all right. He was running like the devil, with a knife in his hand. Thank you. With the court's permission, Mr. Cardini, you may leave the stand and walk over to the man whom you saw running from the liquor store after barracks fell on the sidewalk. granted me by the state of New York, I sentence you, Nicholas Bradner, to die in the electric chair at Sing Sing State Prison at Arsening, New York, sometime during the week of November 9th. And may God have mercy on your soul. 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 I think the kid ought to have another chance, Mr. Flanders. From the transcript, I'd say he had a fair trial. Well, I ain't denying that, sir, but... Uh... You can't get away from these two positive identifications. Well, now, supposing those witnesses made a mistake. Well, in that case, Mr. Regal, I'd say there was a chance of getting him a new trial. Do you have any indication? Well, I think a couple of those witnesses uh, ain't too sure. Well, uh, if they'd want to come in and uh, give me affidavits to that effect, then then I'd say I'd accept the case. Uh, here's 10 grand. Try that on for size. I think that'll fit fine. But remember, Regal, there mustn't be any intimidation. Oh, nobody's gonna get intimidated, Mr. Flanders. Ah! Oh! You didn't see him, Kurt. Ah! The windshield. It was fuck. Oh, please don't. You've been thinking about it. Oh. And now you just ain't sure it was Bradner, huh? No. All right. I'll say it. Please, please don't do it again. I'll say it. It wasn't Bradner. You didn't see him, Cardini. I don't see Bradner. Sure, I see him. Right over there. Got a nice business here, Cardini. Remember what used to happen before you joined the Protective Association? Remember what happened to Enrique? Please, uh, Mr. Riga. I'm going to catch a pneumonia. Here. Go and see the lawyer Flanders. Tell him your conscience is bothering you. You don't want the wrong guy to burn. How's your love life, Millie? Yeah. Some love life. Just got out of the hospital. Yeah, so I heard. You, uh, you feeling any better? Felt better till I seen my bill. Yeah, Millie, uh, lots of children still got you on the books for a pretty big chunk. Yeah. $312. I'm doing my best, Mr. Riggle. But when you gotta pay a dollar interest for every five you borrow, that's not so easy. Well, maybe I could make it easy on you. Yeah? I'm interested. Nicky Bradner was here just before a man barracks got knocked off. Remember? Yeah. He didn't leave here, Millie. He hung around for about an hour clowning with you. So you couldn't have died, remember? No. Ah, I'll show you a bill. Well, why didn't I tell it to the DA when Nicky was on trial? Well, you had your own troubles. He was in the hospital. Yeah, that lousy gallbladder. You might want to do what's right. You want to go and see Michael X. Flanders, Nicky's lawyer, and give the kid an alibi. An alibi? Oh, yeah. Now I remember. I remember good. What are you doing? You know how much good your memory's gonna do you? No, Mr. Regal, how much? Three hundred twelve dollars worth. Tell Lassie I said so, huh? Hope I didn't take too long, Ma. Rosalie had a nice talk today with Father Houdanik. Yeah, that's fine. Yes, I told him how ashamed I was and how sorry. 
But I really want to have my baby. Make a good home for it. I asked him if it was possible for me to marry Nikki in the death house. You ain't marrying nobody in our death house. You want the papers, I suppose. In the society column. So my my friends can read about it. I got news for you, kid. You're marrying that boy in church. I'm getting you a husband to live with. Not to cry over. Oh, Phil. You really mean it. Would I kid about a thing like that? But this boy was sent up there for murder. Nah, he got a raw deal, ma. What chance did he have? With a 300 buck lawyer who didn't know his way around third base? You know who I got to handle the deal? Michael X. Flanders. Flanders? He's the biggest lawyer in Brooklyn. Are you kidding? 36 straight acquittals. <laughs> you think Nicky's innocent? Would I want you to marry him if he wasn't? No, oh, we've got a very good chance. Those two witnesses already changed the testimony. Oh, we found a new witness who was with him when the murder happened. Oh. So he, he couldn't have done it. You think he'll get a new trial? With ammunition like that, what do you think? No. <laughs> I personally took the affidavits of Mr. Cardini and Mr. Huff. And never in my long career as an attorney have I encountered two more conscience-stricken individuals. These men told me that they lay awake night after night, worried that their blurred vision or mistaken identification would send an innocent young man to his death. Now, these men came to me of their own free will when they heard that I was trying to reopen the case. Now, may I further direct your attention to the affidavit of Miss Millie Swat. She states that at the exact time of the incident at Barrett's liquor store, the defendant was indulging in refreshment at her candy store, some four blocks away, and that he engaged her in conversation for some time after the Barrett's incident. I have read the affidavit. In view of the preponderance of new evidence, I have no alternative except to grant a new trial. Has the district attorney any comment? A new trial at this time would be a complete waste of the state's funds. Under the present peculiar circumstances, the defendant will be declared innocent. And I would never again be able to try him for this murder, which I'm firmly convinced he did commit. Your Honor, I move for immediate dismissal of the charge against my client. Do you agree to dismissal? The only way I have to keep the charge open, I agree, in the hope that someday I may be able to again charge this defendant and make it stick. Mr. Flanders, the district attorney has taken the only way open to him. But these circumstances are extraordinary and suggest an improper, probably illegal, and certainly immoral situation. Case dismissed. Believe me, Flanders, sooner or later I'll get those witnesses for perjury. It's your purpose, Blaker. First, you'll have to prove it. What, what happened? What's the decision? Do I get a new trial? No new trial. You're free as of now. Free. Wow. Mr. Flanders, you did it! You did it! You did it! Easy, Bradner. Control yourself. So how can I ever thank you, Mr. Flanders? I've been well paid. You can thank the man who retained me. Well, I've been asking you. Who is it? You know in a minute. Okay, it's all yours. Hello, punk. Phil Regal. You... You were the one... You hired Flanders for me. How do you thank somebody for a thing like this? For saving my life? I didn't do it because I like you. Then I... I don't get it. For Rosalind. My kid sister, that's who I did it for. I guess you know who Rosalie is. Rosalie? Of course I know her. 
She's in love with you, punk. She's gonna have your kid. That's why you're out and alive. For one reason, one reason only, to make her happy. She's... I didn't know. Being up there and all, I didn't know. Yeah, sure. If you'd have known, you would have done something about it, huh? Well, if I could, I swear, Mr. Regal, I would have been on the level with her. You will be. She's waiting at home for you. So all the time it was Rosalie. Come on, punk, you're getting married tomorrow. You should see the arrangements I made. Deal. You're invited, huh? What else? I'm going without an invitation? I can't get over it. The day before yesterday, he used to sing, sing, and today he gets married. Excuse me. Hey, 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 sweetie. Hey, sweetie, hey, ain't you over doing a little? Oh, yeah. Yeah, come on, honey, let's sit down and relax. Oh, you're both out of your mind. Oh, no, come on, take it easy. Nice party, huh? Oh, Phil, I owe you so much. We sure do. Hey, you go sit down. I'll get you some punch. Okay. Nikki? Wait here in a minute. I want to get some of that food. Dear Rosalie. Sit by your mama. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Rosalie. <laughs> your eyes should shine like this every day. Oh, mama. The way everything worked out, I couldn't be happier. I hope the boy after today will be better than before. I think now with the responsibilities and someone to really care for him, he'll be different. I know. I hope so, Rosalie. I pray so. Nicky boy, you must have a rabbit foot or something. <laughs> I got the whole bunch. What job do you think Phil's plan is wearing? I don't know. Bookmaking, maybe. Remember, I used to be a runner for Joe Bellasini. I'm very good at organizing, you know. Hey, uh, Finney, uh, do me a favor, will you? Sure, Mr. Eagle. And Mr. Rosalie, man? Sure, glad to. What do you have, Phil? I want to talk to you. Finney. You're the luckiest punk in the world, you know that? When the number's up, it's very few people can handle the brass ring. You don't have to tell me, Phil. If I thank you a million times, I want to express how grateful I am. Gratitude, you can stick up your nose. There's only one reason I got your free ride. You don't have to be sore at me. I'll, I'm going to do everything I can to make it up to her. I'm crazy about it. I see that you stay that way. I heard you talking to Finian. in there. I guess you have got something in mind for me to do. Yeah, I got something in mind. You're starting for Salerno Brothers Monday. S Salerno, the... Driving a truck 85 a week. 85? I hear kids cost plenty, and Rosalie, Look, if Rosalie needs something, she knows where to come. All you got to worry about is keeping your nose clean and staying out of jams. You're making an honest living for you, understand? Yeah, I understand. I just thought for your brother-in-law, you might have special plans. I ain't complaining. Okay, okay. Stop looking like the world fell on you. This is your wedding. Let's go and drink to Rosalie's happiness. Come on, everybody. We're gonna drink a toast to the bride and groom. Hey, Rosalie. Here. And so, Nikki and Rosalie were married. And as far as Phil was concerned, they would live happily ever after. Or else. One day, a few weeks later, a strange form of marine life popped to the surface of a Catskill Mountain lake. The body was identified as Albert Paradise, until recently, supervisor of slot machines in the Catskill district. Attached to his remains was one of his own slot machines, a hideously humorous warning on the part of the executioners. It was never proved that Phil Regal had anything to do with this grim joke. However, shortly thereafter, one of his men arrived in that district to take over the slot machine business. Because of the Paradise killing, I was assigned to do a series of articles tying together all of the unsolved gang murders in greater New York. I was interviewing every known racket executive. What do 
you have to do to get a neat coat like that? I haven't got it yet. Hey, that kiss just cost me 4,000 bucks. You know, one thing I like about you, kid, you got a lot of guts coming up here to interview me when you'll probably write him a bum or something. It's my job, Regal. Sure, you can write that old junk about how I'm mixed up in a lot of rackets. What would you have? I'd like a fresh angle. All right. You want to write an article about Phil Regal? Write about, uh, Phil Regal and his family. Might make a story at that. Regal felt that anything I'd write about his racket activities would be last year's hash. He insisted that I'd get a new outlook on the Regal story if I'd go to dinner with him at his mother's home in Brooklyn. How do you like my ma? She's, uh, kind of cute, ain't she? <laughs> <laughs> She's very nice. Uh, a guy like you wouldn't know what it means to come out of a crummy section like this and still be a success. You might be wrong about that. Uh, what college you go to? Columbia. Yeah? Come here. That uh, was my college down there. I used to be an old man with a push cart of fruit. Every day on the way home from school, we'd pull a trick I figured out. One of the kids would grab an apple or something so the old man would chase him. Then the rest of us would fill our pockets. When the old geezer come back, half the fruit stand would be missing. <laughs> After, I charged the guy a dime a day to keep the other kids from stealing. <laughs> How do you like that? <laughs> a dime a day for protection. Hello, Phil. Those stairs get higher every time I climb them. There she is. Hiya, doll face. Oh, uh, this is Joe McFarlane of the uh, Chronicle. Uh, this is my sister, Rosalind. Oh, I know Joe. We went to high school together. Rosalie Rogalczyk. Phil Regal Rogalczyk. It's funny, I never got the connection. You went to high school together? Yes, because he was a couple of years ahead of me. Oh, she wouldn't remember this, but one whole term I had an awful crush on her. <laughs> you never said anything. You, uh, you used to live around here? It is six blocks away. My father walked a beat on Roebling Street. A cop? McFarlane. Gimpy McFarlane, he, he kind of limped. He was shot in the leg when he first joined the force. Say, he was killed, wasn't he? I kind of remember. Yeah. By a couple of other kids who went to college in that street down there. Joe, whatever happened to you? He just disappeared. My mother and I moved to Manhattan. I got a scholarship and went to Columbia. Journalism. What, are you a wise guy or something? Hmm? Letting me shoot off my mouth about how you wouldn't understand living in a section like this, not saying nothing? Well, we were getting your story, not mine. You know, I kind of like this guy. Dinner's ready, Phil. Hello, Rosalie. Hello, Mama. Come on, let's go and eat. Get a load of that. Still the prettiest kid in the neighborhood. <laughs> How bad she is. Hi, everybody. What's doing? You're late. I'm a working stiff, remember? I take a load over to Jersey. Sunday's double time. How are you, honey? Fine. Joe, this is my husband, Nicky Bradner. Joe McFarlane. Hi. Joe and I used to go to school together. Hey, so? Well, what's the Ma? Well, I, I wish I could stay longer, but I've got a deadline. I hope you'll excuse me. I'll drive you back. No, no, I'll, I'll get a cab. No, I'll cut it out. I've got to go to Manhattan anyway. I've got some people waiting. Mama? Uh, Mrs. Regalchik, thanks for a wonderful meal. Anytime. You are welcome. Come back. Come with Phil. Thank you. It was nice seeing you again. Same here. And knowing you had a crush on me. Oh, uh, Joe, wait for me in the car. I'll be down in a minute. Yeah. So long. How are things on the truck, Mickey? All right. Pretty rugged for what I get out of it. You're doing okay. Just keep your nose clean. Why do you have everybody at the plant watching me? You loony. I know you got that red-headed bookkeeper on the payroll. I trip over every time I go to the washroom. So don't go to the washroom. Phil, let them live their own lives. When will you learn? I know this punk better than you do, Ma. How are you feeling, Rosalie? What does the doctor say? I'm fine. You think you were going to have the baby? I got a big stake in this kid. I'm going to be an uncle. Wait, Phil. I go down with you. I have some dinner for Miss Wanfis. She don't feel so good.
I ain't gonna stand for it. I just can't take it anymore. Honey, he doesn't mean anything. Keep your nose clean. Toe the mark. Watch yourself. He's sticking it. Sticking like I was a piece of dirt. Him and his big cars and them $200 suits. Look at me. Look at the rags I gotta wear. Get up 6 o'clock in the morning and sleep on a crummy truck all day. I ain't used to that, and he knows it. Missy. Uh, he's getting a great big charge out of doing these things to me. If he'd raise one little finger, he could put me to some good. With all the rackets he's Nicky. running. Nicky! Are you kidding yourself? Everybody and his brother knows that he's an enforcer for gambling, Shylock. Don't you dare talk like that about Phil after all he's done for you. I'm sorry. I don't ever want to hear you say anything like that again. Oh, honey. Don't let Phil get under your skin. This is only his way. He's doing what he thinks is best for you. So why does he pick on me? Don't pay any attention to him. I think you're doing fine. Why do we care what Phil does or says? As long as we love each other, we'll make a good life for ourselves. You'll see. You know something, Rosalie? You're an awful good kid. Come on. Your dinner's getting cold. For some time after that, Nikki really tried to toe the mark to keep his nose clean. and a 95-buck-a-week man. You got a raise. Oh, honey, I'm so proud of sure. you. Sure. They like me. Solano Brothers. They say if I keep it up, I could even get to be fleet manager someday. Oh, I'm going to call Mama right now and tell her. And be sure and tell her, tell that brother of yours, too. He thinks I can't do anything good. Don't worry, I'll tell him myself. Hey, you're pretty rough on a girl in my condition. Gee, I'm, I'm sorry. I was only joking. I hope he has your eyes. And life looked very bright for Nikki and Rosalie, especially the night she went to the hospital to have her baby. If I knew I had to wait around all afternoon, I could have worked my shift. Does it always take this long, Ma? Sometimes it takes longer than other times. Hey, Ma, tomorrow you and me gotta go shopping. I'll buy a bunch of toys for that kid. All right, all right. Mr. Bretner? Hey, oh. Are you Mr. Bretner? Oh, I'm Mr. Bretner. Well, I'm the baby's uncle. Was it a boy or a girl? Come with me, please. <laughs> please. Oh, what is it? Something happened to Rosalie? No, she's not in danger. The baby. Strangulated cord. It's dying. Oh, my poor Rosalie. Hey, Doc, can I see my wife? Only her mother now, please. You can see her in the morning. I'm sorry. Come with me. <laughs> If you know what's good for you, stay away from me. Just stay away from me. This was the breaking point. Nicky was through. He would take no more shoving around. 
To Nicky, independence meant just two things, women and money. For the first, he made certain cozy arrangements with a bar waitress named Margie. For the second, he arranged to have his own truck hijacked by his good friend, Shimmy. To make it look good, he didn't let his helper, Ollie, in on the hijacked plans. We'll be getting out of here. I told you, I want to have a steak of ten grand, huh? Ooh. I already got six and a half thousand. Oh. A couple more deals and away we go. Bonnie, if you're doing so good here. That's piker stuff. Just to get a steak. But I told you my plans. With what I know about the rackets here, out in California, I'm gonna take no time at all. I'll be big, real big. And maybe I'll come back here and show a few guys who's boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A few days after Nikki's declaration of independence, Assistant District Attorney Blaker sent for me. I'm asking you to help. How? Run the toughest story on Regal you can write. List every crime we've ever accused him of. Name all his assistant rats, every name he can dig up. How will that help? You might just scare one of them. You know, Joe, we can talk about being brilliant prosecutors from now till doomsday. But the truth is, there's only one way that organized crime can be cracked. Get somebody on the inside to talk. Your story might just scare one of them enough to do it. I know it's hard to take, Rosalie. I've been putting off running the story because I knew it'd hurt you. But I can't put it off any longer. I'm not going to read any more of it. I don't believe a word of it. It's all true. You don't know Phil very well. You don't know half the good things he does. You don't know what he's done for me and Nikki. Look, that's the side of it you want to see. Sooner or later, you're going to have to face up to the other side. I said I don't want to hear any more. Rosalie. Why did you come here in the first place? Maybe I shouldn't have. But one day the roof is going to cave in on Phil, and I, when it happens, I just don't want you to be standing next to him. Goodbye, Rosalie. Precious lobster you'll ever eat, right smack out of the Chesapeake Bay. <laughs> I'll take some to dry. Hey, the place looks nice. Thank you. Where's Nikki? 
Oh, he's working. He's on a night run. Is that so? Funny he should go on a run without his license. Oh, he went out so quickly tonight, he must have forgotten it. Mickey hates to wear his cap. Well, I just came over to bring you the lobsters. Thanks. So long, Ma, if you need anything, give me a ring, huh? Sure. Bye. Phil, wait! Phil, it's no use lying to you. Mickey isn't on a run. I don't know where he is. He's... He's kind of mixed up lately. It's because of the baby and everything, you know. It affected both of us. He's awful restless, Phil. But he'll settle down. Give him a chance, huh? Sure, sure, sweetie. Don't worry. See you soon, huh? So for quite a while, Nicky did all right for himself. <laughs> Why does the dame always carry all this junk? Huh, if you were drunk, you'd know. To lose some. Phil. Hello. I heard you were out of town. I got back. Phil, I want to tell you something. Some other time, kid. Phil, it'll just take a minute. I. Just the guy I know. You better go in. I'll see you later. Come on. Now go on, beat it. Where are you, Ma? You dinner ready? In a few minutes. The sun is nice and warm yet. Yeah. Remember the fun I used to have up there when I was a kid? We used to play cops and robbers. I had the whole gang buffered, remember, Ma? I used to jump across the next roof there, run down the cellar of that house, and just disappear on them. Disappear? Yeah, the kids never found out. There's a way out of that cellar. You don't have to come up for blocks. Fun, he calls it. Every time I heard he jump, my heart would stop. What is it, a whole eight feet? I bet I could still do it. You want to see me do it now? Don't try, Phil. He still thinks he's a kid. You are now 20 years older and 50 pounds heavier. So what? All right. You can do it on one foot. Come down in five minutes. Hey, you got plenty of seltzer? This time I remember. How'd you get the booze on your chin, Rosie? I told you. Yeah. You slipped and hit it on the sink. How'd you get it? What are you trying to do, Phil? The punk's giving you a hard time, eh? Leave me alone. Look, I happen to know a couple of things you don't know. You didn't get that bruise from no sink, did you? Did you? Honey, you don't love this guy anymore. Come on, admit it. I don't know. Half the times I don't even know where he is or who he's running around with. I made a mistake. So what do I do now, jump off the roof? Charlie, better have no talk, God, Deli. Jamaica fell way down this month. Yeah. All right. Call it back. Hiya, right, kid.
Phil, I, um, I want to explain to you about last night. What about it? I guess it kind of looked funny to you. What do you mean, uh, funny? Well, you see, this girl's brother is a pal of mine, and, and we were shooting pool, and, and a guy hit him with a cue. Yeah. Yeah, pretty bad. So I went to get a sister to take him home. She, uh, she works in that bar. So what's her to explain? I didn't want you to get the wrong idea. Don't be a schmo. How's Rosalie? She's fine. Good. Well, um, I guess I'll blow. What? Yeah, hold it. Give Rosalie my love. Tell her I'll see you Sunday, huh? Sure. Phil, I can't do it. Not to Nicky. He's my best friend. That's why the frame will work. He trusts you guys. But, Phil, you can't ask me to talk to me. You don't say no. Either you're gonna do like I told you, you'll be the dead pigeon instead of Harry Goldish, you understand? Sure, sure, Mr. Regal. We understand. All right. So rehearse me the setup. I don't want no mistakes. You want us to get Harry Goldish into the poker game with Nicky? Yeah. Uh -huh. And we don't let Nicky leave till at least an hour after Harry does. That's right. Now, you'll need two other guys in the game. Get Bloomin' and Angel. I already talked to him. Yeah. Look, Lotsy boy. If you want to be a big man in this business, you got to forget personalities. I got a score to settle with this double-crossing jewelry fence, Harry Goldish. And I want to take care of my cute brother-in-law one at the same time. No personalities, just business. So, believing that Phil had swallowed his lie about Margie, Nicky went to his Hiya, regular beautiful. Saturday night poker game in Millie's back room. But this time, there was an added feature. The jewelry fence, Harry Goldish. Twenty? And... Twenty more. You're gonna see me, Harry? Not for me. Don't forget the house. You didn't even have a pair. You bluffed me. <laughs> you could have called me, Harry. I'm going to shove these cards right down your throat. Hey, what time is it? Uh, it's almost 12 o'clock. I got a date at 12. I'm leaving. Uh, yeah, the one has always got a date. Why don't you call her, Nick, huh? Yeah, Nick, you don't want to quit when you're doing so good. Call her. OK, I'll be right back. His pals convinced Nicky he ought to stay. Nicky was on the hook. Now to put Harry on the road. They broke him fast by a little phony dealing. What's the matter, Harry boy? No luck, huh? That cleaned me up for good. Too bad, Harry. Just not your night. Hey, Nicky. With all that loot, you ought to buy your babe a rock. Buy this ring for 600. I can stay in the game with you. Four fifty. You don't want to buy it, Nicky. Suppose it's hot. Yeah, what do you want to do? Get Nicky in trouble? Ah, oh, you crumbs of skin off your nose if somebody wants to make a buck. These are my friends, Harry. They're just trying to protect me. No, who cares? I got a guy that's going to take the whole schmear off my hands in the morning. See you guys. Come on, Harry. Come on, Harry. No hard feelings, Harry. Take it easy, Harry. Leave too. Where are you going? Look, it's a chance to get our money back. Yeah, stick around, Nick. This is your night. Yeah. Okay. Okay. When Phil Regal organized a frame, he organized. First, he took care of Harry Goldie. Next in order, Nicky Brad. Thanks for the contribution, guys, but I gotta go. It's after two. Good thing you quit. He'd have busted all of us. <laughs> so long, last year, see. You. 
Lucky Nicky. Nicky was confused. Where was Marty? Phil had taken care of that, too. No loose ends. Phil liked things neat. Hey. Hey, what is this? A sticker? Hey, you, you got the wrong pigeon. I'm Phil Regal's brother-in-law. You Nicky Pratt now? Yeah. Let's go. This is an arrest. I, I ain't done nothing. You're making a mistake. We'll apologize later. Phil's frame was perfect. A tip to the cops that the killer looked like Nicky. Harry Goldish's bag of diamonds planted in Nicky's suit, hanging in Marty's closet. The gun that killed Harry was planted there, too. Nicky was held for Harry's murder. But he wasn't worried. He had an alibi. Four alibis, in fact, named Bloomy, Angel, Shimmy, and Lotsy. I want to talk to my lawyer. I know my rights. Talk to your lawyer. Phone. Phone book. Want me to dial it for you, sweetheart? Hello? I want to talk to Mr. Flanders. What? In Europe? No, no, never mind. I'll find somebody else. It's about time you showed Callan. It's after seven. Mr. Callan, you mean cheap liar. What's the matter with you? All I want from you guys is the truth, and then maybe I can do something for you. But when you deliberately lie to your own lawyer, there's nothing I can or will do for you. I don't get it. Who lied? What are you talking about? You, you gave me your alibi. Four lifelong friends you played poker with. Well, I questioned each one of them at a different time, at a different place, and they all gave me exactly the same story. What, what do they say? That you left the game at about 12.18, just three minutes after Harry. You want me to go into court with that kind of an alibi? Lotsy too? Dirty, lousy liars. Believe me, Mr. Callan. They're framing me. Why would they want to frame you? Phil Regal. That's it. He wants to get rid of me. Phil Regal's framing me. He got to all those guys, and you got to help me prove it. Officer. You better get yourself another lawyer. He read about the trial just 13 months from the time he had been released from the death house at Sing Sing. Nicky was again convicted for murder in the first degree. He framed me. I swear, Phil Regal framed me. Phil Regal, he framed me. Phil Regal, he framed me. I swear, Phil Regal framed me. Phil Regal, he framed me. Hey, McFarlane, out of the way. Rosalie, out this way. Thanks for getting me out of there. Isn't there some way I can help you? No, thanks. Look, I want to ask you a question. Nicky still claims that Phil framed him. You think that's possible? Why should Phil frame him? The last time Nicky was convicted, he got him out. Mm-hmm. I guess you're uh, angry with me for my stories about Phil. Huh? Joe, right now I don't feel anything. Can I drop by and see you sometime? before the date set for Nikki's execution, I received a telegram from Sing Sing. Phil 
received one too. this junk about uh, you giving me a last chance. You came. Why? You scared? Are you kidding? Just uh, curiosity, that's all. I'm supposed to go to the chair on Thursday, Phil. If you'd let one of your boys that sat in on that poker game tell the truth, I could get a stay in a new trial. My boys? If you don't, I'm gonna get you. Maybe I'll die, but I'm gonna get you. Yeah? How? I didn't kill Harry Goldish. And I can't prove you did. But I did kill Barracks. And if you don't do what I said, I'm gonna give Joe McFarlane the whole Barracks story. How you got me out. To put you away, Phil. It's up to you. If it's up to me, you're gonna burn. He got no beef. I wanted to make my sister happy. So I got you a free ride on the merry-go-round. I gave you a brass ring. You mess things up. So I'm taking it back. It's fair. Fair enough. Good. I want to see Joe McFarlane. He can't take any pictures in there. Hmm? Oh. Oh, this isn't a camera. It's a midget tape recorder. No gadget I use for interviews. See? All I do is push this switch. I can record anything you say. Where's the microphone? Right here, under my tie. How about that? What are you doing here? I got an invitation. Been reading your stuff. One of these days, I want to lose my patience. Mr. McFarland. You print one word that punk tells you. They'll be picking you up in a basket. Thanks for coming, Mr. McFarland. Your wire said something about a story. Yeah, I got a story for you. A big story. But first, you gotta promise to help me. Well, if there's any way I can. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll try and make sense. What I want you to do is to make a deal for me with the DA. How? Oh, on what grounds? He's been trying to get something on Phil Regal for years, so he could put him away. Am I right? Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, well, this is it. I'll give him the facts on the barracks case that he never had. And he'll have to believe me. He'll have to. Why, Nicky? Because I really killed barracks. You mean you want to confess that to the DA? Well, it's my last chance to save my life. They'll have to believe me, won't he? I'll testify how Phil got me out. 
by strong arming those witnesses, see? If I can help him get Phil, then maybe you can make a deal so I can get off with second degree. You want me to print that, Nikki? That you confess the barracks murder? I'll do anything. Anything you have to. I only have two days left. All right, Nikki. I'll do everything I can. to his office. Stayed there a couple of hours. Then he walked to the DA's office. The DA's office, huh? Stayed there maybe half an hour. Then I followed him to Grand Central. He bought a ticket for Sing Sing. Went to see the punk. How about tomorrow? Yeah, better tell him tomorrow. After we'll see. Cardini and Hoff for six months, but he couldn't get them to admit they'd been scared into changing their testimony. In order to get them to talk, he'd have had to use more brutal methods than Phil. But of course, he, he couldn't do that. So I guess this is it. I don't know what else to do, Nikki. Phil Regal. Well, you must have done a lot to get him to frame me. Lotsy Frank's my best friend. I grew up with him. We went on our first date together. Well, you must have done a lot. If you see him, you tell him I don't hold no grudge. Well, I guess this is it. Just couldn't wait to grow up. There's some place somewhere wrong. might have been very different if he had decided to live it differently. Just another victim of the slum, the 
gang and himself. The night that Nicky died, I was oppressed by a vague feeling of guilt. Deep inside, I knew I was in love with Nicky's widow, but that wasn't it. It was something I should have done and hadn't thought of doing. Phil Regal. Well, you must have done a lot see, to get him to frame me. Let's see, Frank's my best friend. I grew up with him. We went on our first date together. You were the last one he talked about, Lancey. He said you were his best friend. Yeah, so? Said he understood why you were forced to. I got no secrets from her. We're engaged to be married. In that case, I'll let you hear exactly what he said. Oh, that Phil Regal. Well, you must have done the Lazzi to get him to frame me. It's Nicky. Lazzi Frank's my best friend. I grew up with him. We went on our first date together. We... Look, mister. Nicky was a good kid, but he was wrong. Nobody framed him. Sure they did, Lancey, and you can prove it. For Nicky, he was your best friend. I'll make a deal with the DA. If you admit the frame, I'll try to get you off of the light wrap. Are you kidding? Get out of here. The DA doesn't want you, Lancey. He wants Phil Regal. All right, Phil made you do what you can get back at him this way. For Nicky. You're asking for it, mister, and I'll beat it. All right. If you change your mind, you can reach me at the Chronicle. How do you like that for gall? This is our chance, Latsy. To get out of the racket like we've been talking about. Evelyn, how many times have I told you? This fellow will help you with the DA. He ain't scared of Phil. Look. Even after they beat him up, he wrote about him. You know what you're asking me to do? I'm asking you to be a man. You know what happened to Lefty? To Al Paradise? The police will give you protection. Either you talk to Mr. McFarland or we're finished. I'm not going to wind up a gangster's widow. I can't do it. All right, then we're through. The next time you see me on the street, don't talk to me. Because I just won't know you. Goodbye, Lancy. Evelyn, wait! McFarland. Mm-hmm. Lancy? Yeah, fine, fine. Uh-huh. All right, I'll be in a gray convertible halfway down the block on the north side. Yeah, screw it, 11 o'clock tonight. All right. I'm just going out. But Mrs. Regaldic, is Rosalie here? You can write about my son like you do and then come here looking for Rosalie? Mrs. Regaldic, it's urgent that I talk to her. It concerns you, too. If it concerns me, Rosalie will tell me. She's up on the roof. Tell her I'm going to the grocery. Rosalie. 
Hello, Joe. You know Latsy Franks? He's in Bellevue Hospital. Phil's mob tried to kill him. He spilled everything he knew about Phil. Nobody's guessing anymore. The DA has the whole story. How Phil killed Harry Gold is just to frame Nikki. You didn't believe me before, but this time you have to. So what is it? What do you want me to do? This is going to be a dirty, rotten mess. Clear out before it happens. You expect me to turn my back on my entire life in three seconds because you tell me it's right? Because you have to. Well, who knows what's right? Rosalie, you're still... Look, you came here to tell me that my brother is a murderer and you expect me to pat you on the back. Is that what you want? No. I want you to break with him. Look, you got yourself a big story. Now get out. Get out and leave me alone. McFarland, I want to talk to the DA. Uh, anything new on Regal, Mr. Blaker? Oh, you have a warrant out? Uh-huh. Yeah, well, if he's not at his place, he'll probably be at his mother's. Yes, he does, every Sunday. All right, I'll keep in touch. Hey, Mama! Rosalie, I'm here! Hey, sweetie, didn't you hear me? Hello, Phil. How's my baby, huh? Stop it, Phil. You need a shave. I shaved this morning. Where's Ma? I guess she went to Millie's. We were out of salsa. Honey, I know how you feel. In a few days, we'll forget the whole thing. He was no good, Rosie. Sure. In a few days, I'll forget. Hey, you know what? You need a change. I'm gonna send you and Mama to Miami for the winter. That'll fix everything. Good old Phil. A wave of the pocketbook and he fixes everything. Hey, what's the matter with you? For the first time in my life, I'm seeing things as they really are. Are you nuts or something? Huh? All right, Phil. I'll make things plain. You took care of me all these years. Yeah? You sent me to college. Sure I did. You bought me a car. Yeah. And you got Nicky out of the death house so he could marry me. So what are you sore about? Then, because he was no good, you killed the guy so you could frame him for me. Oh, uh, wait a minute, Rosie. It wasn't like it's that. It's no use lying anymore, Phil. I know. I know everything you've done. All right, suppose you do. Who'd I do it for? Me? No, me. You fixed it so that I'd marry a murderer. Live with a murderer, sleep with a murderer. You got yourself jammed up. I wanted you to marry a nice, decent guy. You had a fall for, for a punk like that. I know I'm to blame. But do you think I would have married Nicky if you hadn't convinced me he was innocent? Rosie, everything I did was to make you happy. How? By force? By killing? You wanted me to marry some decent guy. Where was I supposed to meet such a guy? Who was I? From the time you first stole off a pushcart, my life was over. There was no more Rosalie Rogalchik. Only Phil Regal's sister. How can you talk to me like that? Oh, you, you, you talk like you hate me. Honey, I'll, I'll do anything here. You've done enough for me. I'll leave you alone. Gotta get out of here before Phil. The police are coming here for Phil. I don't want you to get hurt. Why would she get hurt? Phil, you've got to get out of here before the police come. Save yourself. What are they got on me? Rosalie. That's he told them everything. You haven't got a chance. Save yourself. That's my sister. Don't worry, nobody's gonna get me. I'm way ahead of them. All I have to do is get out of this neighborhood and spread a little grease. The combine will fix this wrap. Phil, 
A couple of police cars just pulled up. Rosie, tell Mom I'll be back soon. Not to worry. What are you going to do? I'm going to pull a disappearing act that'll have them talking to themselves. The police will be on their way up the stairs, Phil. If you really love your sister, why don't you give yourself up peacefully? Get away from that door. Gonna use the gun? Do you want Rosalie to see you for what you really are? I should have done this a long time ago. Oh, Phil, don't! <laughs> guys end up cops in the alley